Hello everyone, my name is Ali al -Mutawa. I'm going to talk about strongly typed using declarations. So I'm going to assume you know what types are, you know what strong means, and you know what strongly typed means. Sure. So I'm going to start with the motivation. Imagine you're working with a graphics library, and it has a struct vec2 of some sort, and it has a function called cast ray. So all you can see is declaration and the type. Uh, you, of course, cast ray is supposed to cast ray from a point into a direction. You have two vectors, v1 and v2. Now, one, once you see this call in your client code, you, you have to ask yourself, is this really correct? Is vec2, uh, sorry, if, is v2 the point or is v1 the point? Which one is the direction, right? So this doesn't really give you enough information, right? So one possible solution to this is to name your variables meaningful names. Sure, but again, this doesn't really help you that much if you swap the arguments by, by accident, right? You can go and look at the header file they could have named the variables themselves, and that would help us. Now we know that we swapped the arguments, actually, so we swapped Wild and Dac. But then, realistically, every library just, you know, elides the names and the and the declaration. So some people would use using declarations, and that would certainly help by looking at the function signature. But then this doesn't really prevent us from swapping the arguments back again, right? This doesn't even emit a, war or a compiler warning. So this is. I'm going to showcase the current solution that people mostly use, right? So you'd usually you'd see a class defined like this, strong alias, which you would give it the type that you want to alias, but you also have to give it a tag so it doesn't generate the same type again, right? So this is, would be a use case for it. You have using point equals strong alias of vec2, and then you give it a struct point tag. Uh, the struct point tag class doesn't really exist anywhere else. You don't even have to have, to have a definition for it uh, as long as you're not using it anywhere else in the, in the file. Or anywhere else, actually. Uh, direction is also defined to be a strong alias of vec2. Then you also pass a different struct uh, tag. So this would work. These are not the same type. But then every time you want to use the actual underlying type, you have to do dot value. And then every time you do dot value, you have the same issue of swapping the arguments back again, right? Because then the dot value is still the same underlying type. So sure, the problem is mostly fixed. But then it feels like the language is begging for a language feature. Uh, quote by myself. So instead of the current solution, let's see what the C++ solution could be, right? So we're writing a proposal, sorry, right? And the proposed syntax, actually, it doesn't matter. We just need something to work. But <laughs> for now, the placeholder syntax, syntax I'm going to use is using strong, then the alias type, then equal to the original type. So the, on the left side, we have the original code that we were looking at. We'd have a regular using declarations. And then at the bottom, you can see the call to the function with the argument swap. This would compile, which is bad. On the right side, you see our feature using strong, and then the same code doesn't compile. This would be a compiler error. Yay. Right? So let's look at some of the gist of the proposals that we're writing. In this case, we have uh, the same vec2 class. We have using strong point. Uh, if you assign a vec into a, into a point, that would be a compiler error. However, you can still statically cast between these two types, because at the end of the day, they're still the same type. Uh, kind of, they're alias, but they're strongly typed, right? Same thing going the other way. Another thing is that if you have a, a class that defines some methods, you can see the add method takes the vec2 type itself. Mult only takes the double. And so when I do using strong, when I call the add method, I actually need to add the point class in there, not the vec2 class. Uh, but with mult, because it's a different type than the actual type itself, you can pass a double, that's fine. You can see if I do p.add of vector, that would not compile. And then same thing the other way around. If you do v, uh, vec 2add of point, that wouldn't compile. Uh, one last thing that was kind of uh, unpopular is that if you have two alias types, declaring a function that takes one type and then declaring a function that takes the other type is not uh, uh, going to work. This is a redeclaration error because there's multiple reasons, reasons for this. Uh, first of all, we want to mask kind of the semantics of actual alias types. Second of all, a strong alias type is not really a new type. It's the same type, but with explicit conversions, kind of, mostly. Uh, the point of the paper is to be simple to get into the standard, hopefully, without any pushback. So messing with overloading rules is really a big uh, can of worms that we don't really want to get on. Uh, lastly, if you really want it, you can just define new type, or you can use reflections for that matter. So uh, Alex Waflex, uh, the, he's a compiler engineer at Baylib. Apparently, uh, he is the guy who implemented deducing this uh, uh, into GCC. Shout out to Ben Dean and the authors. And so he's hopefully we're going to have a working implementation in the next couple of months after we finish the writing up the proposal. But yeah, that's basically it. Thank you very much. <laughs>